guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really, really well. And this is the Asian Cup review for today's action. We're going to look at tomorrow's last four sets of matches. We're also going to analyze how the round of 16 is going to play out as well. So if you're excited, please do like and share the video. If you like the video in general, please subscribe. Leave me your opinions in the comments. And let's get into it. So starting off, we had Japan taking on Indonesia with both nations needing a victory to advance to the next stage. Well, I think a draw would have took both through, but it ends 3-1 to Japan, and that has pretty much put Indonesia on the brink of an exit because Indonesia now, realistically, do need a bit of a favour from the oman Kyrgyzstan game. They can't let Oman win. Uh, they ideally need Bahrain to lose as well uh, by at least... Uh, two goals so not working out there for Indonesia and it'll be it's sad to see I think uh, anyway if we're talking about the game I thought Japan they started really really well they started with fire inside their belly they wanted to show what they, they were and it was a penalty in the third minute and it was a stupid penalty to give away from the Indonesian player Sandy Walsh he's like literally just slammed him to the floor ridiculous to be honest and just like that Japan get an opening and Japan get started with a massive goal, 1-0 to the Japanese. From there, it was going to be a bit of a mountain to climb for the Indonesians. And I thought after that, the game became really, really boring. I thought Japan were having all of the ball. Indonesia seemed content uh, with 1-0 at that moment in time. Uh, but uh, then, all of a sudden, lovely little move. A lovely move on the right. Ritsu Doan, I thought, had a really, really good game. Hitate, the midfielder, I was very, very high on him. Uh, before the Asian Cup and I thought he showed his worth. I thought it was a good performance. Hopefully uh, Moriyasu is bold enough to give him a chance in a round of 16 game. But just like that it is. Uh, uh, Japan turned it on and they almost scored in minute 36. They hit the post. Uh, but Indonesia see out to half time. 1-0 down. And in that first half Japan weren't playing at their supreme best like we known them to play. Uh, in the past they were... They were, they were keeping the ball, but I thought Indonesia were happy to let them have the ball. But second half, second half they turned it on. Second half, Japan really, really did turn it on. It was much, much better, uh, I thought. And uh, Ueda scores really, really early in the second half. Lovely move again. Ritsu Dovan starts the move. Ritsu Dovan cross finishes off the move. Fantastic. And 2-1, I mean 2-0. And mounting the climb really for Japan and um, for Indonesia from there. And they were just look, really, really looking to hold on to the goal difference margin. Uh, after that, Japan started to get some openings. And after the 70th minute, I think uh, Shin I think finally gave the order, go for it. And Indonesia, I thought, showed some good things when they actually tried to play good football. I know it was Japan, so they can't play like this from the first minute. But I thought they showed something really, really good. I thought Marcelino, uh, he had a great chance on the cut back. But I thought Indonesia played a really, really good match. Look, 3-1. It's nothing. Look at teams like Syria getting battered uh, in the World Cup qualifier. Look at Germany. So I thought Indonesia did not disgrace themselves. But this result has led them, left them a bit precarious. Uh, anyway, the third goal, Ureda, who with a strike, uh, it deflects on the Indonesian defender, goes in. And just like that, it's 3-1. Japan, much, much better. I thought, uh, even if the, I thought the game at times was dull and stale, but I thought they did the job. And I thought they showed some good qualities and at times they can turn it on. So it's going to be interesting to see how they do in that round of 16 game. Uh, Indonesia. Indonesia. I think at the moment that late goal from Sandy Walsh might be actually very, very important. If it does go come down to goal difference, they'll need Jordan to at least beat Bahrain by two clear goals. In case Bahrain were not to score. If Bahrain were to score, then it had to be three for Indonesia to make it through. No, then it would go to fair play, I think. Yeah, if Jordan's if Jordan score, uh, it's actually complex. So let me get the goal at the moment. So Indonesia's goal difference is three goals scored, six conceded minus three. Bahrain at the moment are on two goals scored and three conceded. So Bahrain lose by two goals with them not scoring. Indonesia will head through. If, of course, uh, Bahrain were to score and Jordan were to put three past them in that scenario. Of course, then, it will come down to fair play, and I think I don't know that yet. What's the calculation for there? But it's going to be tight. If I'm really uh, Indonesian, I really, really want, want Kyrgyzstan and Oman to be a draw because that would leave Oman on two, and that's the only way Indonesia could head into the next round. But anyway, I thought they fought well, and they showed some good qualities at the end, and even if they went out, I thought they went out with a bang. Japan, 
through and anyway now moving to the other game and this game had practically nothing but still produced a lot of drama here Iraq 3 Vietnam 2 and Vietnam go out with a fight uh, Vietnam did go out with a fight but again Vietnam uh, the first goal anyway the first 17 minute we have a lovely bit of cross into the box uh, which is turned out turned in by the of course the uh, Iraqi defender I don't know how that's given as offside because the he he doesn't even touch the ball so it's baffling that goal was, didn't stand uh, anyway Iraq I mean no Iraq have a couple of chances after that things that an Iqbal for probably the best chance of the game and then comes the first goal of the match it's a lovely flight to free kick and it is one new to Vietnam and from there they were climbing uh, a mountain a bit I thought Iraq at that point because I thought Vietnam were going to sit on this and I think Iraq are going to find it really 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 hard to score just like in the vocal qualifier game but then I think the the Vietnamese player just loses his head it, there's no explanation for this he loses his head and Vietnam go down to 10 and I feel for Vietnam uh, anyway in the second half uh, Iraq bring on the changes uh, Ali Jassim comes on uh, Ayman Hussein comes on who at the moment is the top scorer at this Asian Cup so Crazy stuff there, Ayman Hussein on 5, in fact. So yeah, Ayman Hussein comes on, he makes an impact, Jassim makes an impact, and Iraq have a goal straight after the half-time start, and it's a massive goal, 1-1. After that, I thought it was an, Iraq didn't create that much, to be honest. Yes, they had 22 shots, but I thought it was mostly pot shots. I thought Vietnam defended really, really well. And then comes the second goal, Ayman Hussein, Ali Jassim, brilliant play on the left wing. He gets the ball, he's a baller, Ali Jassim. He's going to make a move to Europe. He, he is. I, I'm sure of that. He's a really, really talented baller. He, he gets past his defender. Puts a lovely cross in. Ayman Hussein puts a brilliant header in. And it's 2-1 to Iraq. And then later on, penalty to Iraq as well. And Ayman Hussein takes the penalty. Hits the post. Unluckily, uh, I thought it was a good penalty. He beat the keeper. Keeper was just gone up as his side. It's just the post is hard one to take. But Vietnam then... Uh, they actually attacked a bit and they gave it a good go and they scored and it was actually a very nice finish too to we thought that was going to be it but with the 10 minute stoppage Iraq gets a penalty in the final minutes again reckless from Vietnam uh, I think they, they could have won they could have won this game if they just if their heads were in place uh, I think for Tursi will be very disappointed I know it was Iraq but Iraq did rotate a bit Ali Chasim didn't play uh, Ayman Hussein didn't play and penalty and Ayman Hussein again takes it. Ayman Hussein puts it away. And just like that, Iraq finished the group stage with nine points. So so that so that leaves group D with Iraq on nine, Japan on six, Indonesia on three, and waiting for tomorrow's action to see if they're gonna be here come the round of sixteen. And Vietnam are heading home. Uh anyway, now we look at tomorrow's action. So we've got South Korea taking on Malaysia. South Korea. If they do not uh, win tomorrow, and if Jordan do not lose, they would avoid Japan. But then they'll most most likely play Saudi Arabia in round 16. I'm like, I'm excited for this game. I am really, really excited for this game. I think this is going to be an interesting, interesting game, South Korea and Malaysia. Both teams are a decent team. I think they play some good football. Uh, I think Malaysia in the last game showed good defensive resilience as well. They played well, very, very well to for a draw. Uh, almost for a draw against uh, Bahrain. And if, if Ali Madnan did not score that goal, we could have been talking about Malaysia having a chance, realistically. But anyway, Malaysia got nothing to play for tomorrow. South Korea, I don't know what South Korea are going to think about tomorrow. Will they try and win? Will they try and lose? Will they try and draw? What will South Korea do? Uh, I'm sure they're going to be professional enough and try and win the game, personally. I would like to think that. Mm, personally, I think it's in the spirit of the game. And I think South Korea, look, they haven't been the best at this tournament. We have to be honest, in the first two games. I'm talking about Bahrain, yeah, they played okay. Against Jordan, they looked poor for most of it. Uh, so they're going to have to improve significantly. Now, Malaysia defended much, much better. Had a threat on the counter. And Malaysia could do what Vietnam have done today. Malaysia could easily do what Vietnam have done to Iraq today. I mean, of course, Iraq won the game, but if Vietnam don't get a man sent off, I don't think Iraq personally win that game. So, Malaysia can do something in South Korea. I feel that. I genuinely, genuinely do feel that. I think Malaysia got something about them. I think they've got some good players. They're going to 
play with full freedom against a powerhouse like South Korea, you just never know. And I don't know what mentality South Korea are going to come out with, really, because for this game. I am excited for this game. I think it's going to be a good game, personally. I think the both teams will probably go for it. I think South Korea are just going to have too much, though. Come on, let's be honest. South Korea are just going to have too much for Malaysia. I think Malaysia will give a tough, tough fight. But I think South Korea are going to be too good, personally. I think South Korea will turn it on. I think Son, he needs to get firing. He hasn't scored. He's only scored one goal from the penalty spot. Uh, so it's important for the confidence for South Korea to win, I think, personally. Even if they do have to play Japan. I think you have to beat the best to get to win the cup. So it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. Uh, I think Jürgen Klinsmann will know how big, big of a game it is for them. Malaysia and will know how big of a game it is for them. I think it's going to be a very open game. I think both teams will try and go for it. And I really feel South Korea will win tomorrow. But they still might, top, still might not finish off the group. I'm going with a 2-1 South Korea win. I think South Korea will get the job done tomorrow. And they think they will win against Malaysia 2-1. Oh, uh, if I move to the other game, Jordan versus Bahrain. Bahrain need a point. Jordan are already qualified. Win would take them top of the group, but that means they, they, they play Japan. Bahrain, if they were to win and South Korea were not to win, would top this group. I'm excited for this game. Bahrain looked very poor, though, against uh, Malaysia, too. They, they was very, very boring, lethargic football. And I feel like Jordan got a chance. If Jordan want to play... And the same intensity they did against uh, South Korea, I think Bahrain are in big trouble. Big trouble. Because Jordan played with a real charisma, real character. Bahrain didn't play with that against, uh, uh, as we call, uh, Malaysia. Bahrain were poor. And now Bahrain, it's time to turn your game on. Bahrain lose by two goals and they could be going home. Bahrain have been disappointing. But Bahrain are somebody that I think can still make it through. Of course, Jose Antonio Pizzi, I don't think Percy is the right guy for them. But you never know. You just never know, do you? I think this one's going to be an interesting watch, personally. I think uh, I think Bahrain will dominate most of the ball, but I think Jordan going to have their own threat. I think Jordan going like, to gonna make life difficult. I think they've got some very good players in the attacking half. And Bahrain can't defend. Bahrain's organisation is not great. So I do think Jordan will win tomorrow. And I think Bahrain will be relying on, realistically... Not losing by more than two goals. And I think Bahrain will lose by a single goal. I'm going with a uh, I'm going with a one nil Jordan. Yeah, I'm going one nil Jordan here. I think Jordan be much, much better this Asian Cup. They have woken up before the Asian Cup, so credit to Jordan and credit to their management team. So I think Jordan will win tomorrow and Bahrain will I think still make it through with a one nil loss. So anyway, and the uh, Bahrain will play Iraq, probably the easiest tie they could have got. Anyway. You got Saudi Arabia taking on Thailand later on in the day. Uh, Thailand, Ishii, they went to the 90s. I mean, they took out the Italians, Caltenaccio, from the 90s. I think they're going to make it hard for Saudi Arabia tomorrow. Saudi Arabia have not been one... They haven't been convincing. Yeah, I know they got six points on the board, but they haven't been one bit convincing. I think Iran have been more convincing. I think you know, Japan, if they lost one game, have been more, more convincing. Iraq, even South Korea, Saudi haven't been convincing. It took the, it was not good enough. And now I think against Thailand, it could be a difficult game for them. Thailand at the, at the, and the Ishii have done well. Of course, I think I like what Ishii's done so far. But I think this is the type of game that Saudi should thrive in. They got a physical advantage, they got a crowd advantage, and they got an advantage of a team that's going to give them the ball and try and play. And I think Saudi Arabia, look, if they do not win tomorrow, Serious questions needs to be asked of oh, Roberto Mancini. I mean, I think he'll probably get the Asian Cup anyway, but... Thailand can get something tomorrow. Do I think they can? Uh, they will? I'm doubtful. I still think Saudi Arabia got a lot of quality. Garib... When is, when is Garib actually going to start a game for Saudi Arabia? It's actually insanity that Garib is on the bench. Al Dasari has offered almost nothing in this tournament. And he's, he, Garib is still on the bench. How? And I think, personally, I think South Korea will be good, too good for Thailand, personally. I think uh, Saudi should be winning tomorrow. But I think Thailand should qualify as well. I am going with a 2-1 uh, Saudi Arabia win. And I think Saudis will make it through with 9 points. But probably the most unconvincing 9 points ever. But they'll get the 9 points, I feel, personally. Uh, with a 2-1 loss, uh, the Thais will be heading through to the next round as well. Uh, Kyrgyzstan versus Oman. Kyrgyzstan need to win. To qualify, actually, 
actually, I don't think Kyrgyzstan will make it even if they beat uh, Oman. Yeah, Kyrgyzstan are on minus four. So Kyrgyzstan would actually have to win by two clear goals, not by one. So if you're Indonesian, I've got some good news. So Indonesia just need a Kyrgyz win by one goal to qualify. Kyrgyzstan need a two goal win to qualify. Oman need a win. Simple as that. Oman win, Oman will qualify. But I feel like this game's got drama. I don't know why. I, got, I feel like this game's got drama. This is a massive game. Kyrgyzstan have nothing to lose. Uh, they are already on the brink of going out. Oman had looked unconvincing, man. Unconvincing. Very unconvincing to me. They haven't played well. And I feel like Oman could easily head out tomorrow. It could easily end 0-0. Or even might end 1-0 to Kyrgyz. Oman have not played well enough at this tournament. They haven't. I don't think. Except that first 20 minutes against Saudi, they haven't played well enough, personally. And to be honest, Kyrgyzstan and attack don't look the greatest. But I think tomorrow they're just going to be like, Oman, there you go, you have the ball, you try and break us down. And I think Kyrgyzstan will wait for the last 20 minutes, unless they get some, some sort of red card, to go after this game. Now, the, the bad thing is they've got two players are missing, who I think are pretty big players in this Kyrgyz side. But I think Kyrgyzstan can do something against Oman. Oman, of course, they're going to have the massive support and the crowd and everything like that. But the kicks, they want to cause the upset here. Uh, kicks, they, they would want to head out on a high, I guess. If they even can uh, draw the game, I think it would be good. I think even if they lose by a single three goal, I think it could be good. Why do I feel like Oman are going to crash out, man? Why? I don't, I'm not going to predict it. I am still backing Oman to get the job done against Kyrgyzstan. Just barely 1 0. I, I can't. The, Saleh has been good for Oman. I think he's been the only shiny light. He's the only guy who's actually trying to make something happen. I think we'll probably get one. And I think Oman will probably make it through as one of the best play, third place size, I feel personally. But Oman have not been impressive to me. Kyrgyzstan, do not be shocked if Kyrgyzstan do get some sort of result and Oman don't actually make it through. Don't be surprised. One little bit. Because I'm warning you, they're not great at the moment, Oman. I've seen them at the World Cup qualifiers. I haven't been great. I am just about back in them with a 1 0. It's going to be tight. I think Kyrgyzstan in this whole game should thrive. I think if Kyrgyzstan do not try and press, it could be a long day at the office for Iman, in my opinion. Uh, anyway, now we look at the knockout brackets and let's see how that's shaping up. By tomorrow, we'll have the knockout brackets all sorted. Uh, Tajikistan are taking on UAE. The winner would play Iraq or. Third place in E or F, so at the moment that would be one of Bahrain, South Korea, Jordan, Oman, Kyrgyzstan, Thailand. It would be one of those six teams for uh, Iraq. Uh, Australia could play Palestine or Indonesia. Um, at the moment, uh, winner of Group F will play runner of Group B, and that will play the uh, game, winner of the Australia game. Iraq play Syria, who would play the winner of Japan versus winner of Group E. Qatar play the third place out in C or E so at the moment that's Palestine or South Korea no Group E yeah so it could be South Korea it could be Qatar versus South Korea Bahrain Jordan and of course uh, Palestine Uzbekistan will play the runner-up of Group F so that could be Thailand or Oman so those would be the two teams that Uzbekistan would play most likely. Anyway, this was the AFC, AFC Asian Cup review for today's action. And we preview tomorrow's match as well. If you like the video, please do like and share the video. If you like the video in general, please subscribe. Leave me your opinions in the comments about everything that I have discussed in the video. And we're going to come back later on with more drama, I'm sure, at the Africa Cup of Nations. As we've got the final set of games at the AFCON group stage as well. So do keep your eyes peeled. And I'll have to see you guys later for that video as well.